In this video, a method is presented to construct and display complex geological structure in three dimensions using open source GIS applications. The study area is the Helvetic Fold at Thrasbelt in front of Mount Titlis in Switzerland, where excellent outcrops reveal the structures. They are imaged with aerial photography, digital elevation model, leader, all in stunning high resolution. Our aim, create a 3D geo cover display to correlate regional thrusts along which the sedimentary pile was transported, folded and imbricated. The ultimate goal, construct the geological structure in three dimensions, define the tectonic levels, describe the relationships of folds and thrust and their characteristics, and test working hypotheses with geometric forward modeling. QGIS and BlenderGIS are two free computer programs that help geologists to compile and analyze outcrop data, carry out geographically accurate 3D construction, and to visualize complex geometries in virtual reality. These open source applications not only allow for improved 3D analysis, but also make complex geology more easily understandable for others. The gel cover, which provides a detailed representation of the geological outcrop data, was compiled using QGIS software. This involved the use of existing geological maps, which were updated to own fieldwork. LIDAR and photorealistic imagery were also examined and incorporated into the map. To enhance the accuracy of the gel cover, it was projected onto the height models from Swiss Topo, which are available in remarkable details with a resolution of up to 0.5 meters. This allowed for a precise and comprehensive visualization of the geological features in the area. Let's take a closer look at the fold and thrust structure of the axon map, which are spectacularly exposed in a thousand meter high vertical cliff to the west of Engelberg. The Helvetic fold and thrust belt, of which the axon map is part of, has been pushed from the south some 30 kilometers along the Helvetic overthrust. The rocks outcropping in the cliff are showing the transition from a terrestrial environment in the Triassic to shallow marine sediments during the Jurassic. A block faulted marine setting exists in the lower Jurassic with sandy and precious limestone. Black shales and crinoidal sandy limestone in the middle Jurassic testifies a high energy shallow marine shelf. A thick sequence of massive dense limestone is typical for the upper Jurassic. This purely bedded Quinton limestone stands out as cliff builder in the landscape. The axon map is made up of four regional correlatable thrust sheets, each of which pushed as more or less coherent unit northward and internally deformed separately. The four thrust sheets, also called stockworks, are internally deformed into one or more recumbent fold, which can be found stacked or imbricated. An insight into the internal structure can be gained in the Garstock cliff a 3D construction of the individual folds making up the stockwork. Let's take a virtual tour of the internal architecture of individual thrust sheets. The Hurtstock structure is a prime example of the recumbent thrust fold that comprises the stockwork form. It is 10 km long, 2 km wide and further broken up. The tight fold structure is composed of upper Jurassic marls at its core, indicating that the thrust sheet became detached from its substratum within the upper Jurassic shield marls. As one moves towards the southern end of the structure, the overturned fold limb becomes thinner, while the normal limb comes to an abrupt end at the ramp. This is where intense folding and thrusting took place, resulting in the formation of a drag fold that was intensely sheared as the hanging block ramped up and moved northwards, ultimately deforming into a higher recumbent fold. Rotsand model forms the southern part of Stockwerk 3 and is a significant geological structure. This large recumbent fold is internally divided into four main units each of which is further split up into imbricated and severely deformed compartments. The 
four units comprising Old St. Molina, a basal shia zone located within Upper Jurassic Mounds of Limestone. The overturned fold limb with several Upper Jurassic imbricated compartments. The normal fold limb which also exhibits heavily folded and upfolded Upper Jurassic rocks. A fold core consisting of Lower to Middle Jurassic rock. This suggests that the Thres G3 detached from its substratum is in Lower Jurassic marl and shale beds. Interestingly, the Upper Jurassic broken up large recumbent fold is dislocated from the core. Clear disharmonic deformation of the competent Upper Jurassic and Middle Jurassic Sea limestone appears to have occurred through differential movement across the unusually thick Erzeg shale marls found in this area. Upon closer inspection, the core of the recumbent fold reveals several tightly isoclinal folded slivers. The core appears to be a wedge shape, pressed into the split apart upper Jurassic recumbent fold limbs. The northward push of the core took place across a 100 meter thick shear zone of upper Jurassic marls, intercalated with meter thick competent limestone slabs. The deformation mechanism within the shear zone is beautifully revealed. Competent limestone experienced brittle folding, whereas the incompetent mall sequence deformed semi-ductile into several shear zones with tight chevron folds. Thresh sheet stockwork 2 deformed into a large double fold, both at the middle Jurassic and upper Jurassic limestone level. The deformation of the upper Jurassic quintin limestone was disharmonic, causing it to dislocate across the Erzeg shield mall. The Graufstock core contains Lower Jurassic rocks, indicating that it is detached within the Lower Jurassic substrate. Mount Graufstock is composed of a couple of tight drag folds that represent the ramp along which the Graufstock recumbent fold terminates. This is also the location where the Rotsand Nolens rest sheet broke off and dislocated towards the north. The Triassic to Jurassic sedimentary pile was thrust over the Aare Massif during the Alpine Orogeny. During its 30 km northwards transport, it split up into several thrust sheets along thick marl and shale units. During its transport along the Helvetic overthrust, the thrust sheets underwent deformation and were disformed into stacked and imbricated recumbent folds, as we just observed during our virtual tour. The Helvetic Nap originated from a sedimentary basin situated 30 km to the south between the Gotthard and the Ar Massif. It was pushed northward over the Ar Massif, overriding the Helvetic Frisch, then split into two distinct units, the Axen Nap and Trusberg Nap. Both the Axen and Trusberg Naps were subsequently exhumed through the uplift of the Ar Massif. Looking towards Mount Titlis, we see the granitic basement of the Arm Massif and its Triassic to Tertiary sediment cover, the Alphatic Frisch unit, the Alphatic Overthrust, and the six major thrust units of the Axel. As we close this video, we would like to present a geological block diagram and a tectonic map of the Engelberg region. We hope that this virtual tour has provided you with valuable insight into the exciting structural build-up of these mountains. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative and enjoyable, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more geological content.